Yes? Hey, Ernest, it's Dave from the San Jose Water Company. Uh-huh. And I just needed to let you know we've gotten a few complaints about you overusing your water to water all your trees and stuff. I don't water the trees. Well, why are your neighbors all sending in anonymous complaints then? I have no idea whatsoever. Check my check my water use. You're more than welcome to. Well, is he, <laughs> is he, I turned off the water. Jesus, I turned off the water probably well over a, a year ago. I mean, my lawn was just gone to hell, and and um, have they um, you know um, kind of come back a little bit green? But other than, no. Absolutely well, not. Well, I have no idea. It seems but unlikely it that mul- multiple neighbors would be reporting you. Well, maybe because they just see that it's 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 their tropical plants, maybe, and they just assume. Well, I have no idea, but you're more than welcome, Dave, to check my, my water usage. Well, one of the reports, this guy next door, he, he says that he saw you washing your car. Oh, that's bullshit. I haven't even washed my car in months. Well, why, no would, why would he say... And he's, are you sure that this is... Are you got the right number? Definitely, yeah. You're, you're on Link, Ninth Avenue, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, and they, they took a picture of you washing your car. Oh, and, no. I'd like to see that. And, and we, could see, <laughs> we could see in the background you had a swimming pool. Huh? You had a full, a completely full swimming pool in the background of the picture. So we know it's you. Is this a joke? Of course are not. You, is this a joke? No. Are you joking? No, of course not. I work for the water company. This is a joke. How is it a joke? I don't have a swimming pool. I, I, don't have I, swimming I think pool. you using up the water in California when we're in the middle of a drought, that's the joke. You be, you better cut it uh, out. Uh, uh, you, uh, excuse me. Your name is Dave, are you? Yeah. Yeah. Can, can you give me your last name, Dave? For what? I'm not... Well, I'm, I'm not I, I, I'd like to follow up on this. Well, this is... I'm not this the one on little, trial. This is, huh? I'm not the one on trial here. This is not a this. This is a crank call. Wh- why does everyone is keep saying that? Is, is that just your defense mechanism? You just have to say it's a prank call. I mean, are, are you saying that I have a swimming pool? Cause, cause I don't you, have a swimming. You no, know you got caught, so you just have to make up and say, "Oh, it's crank call." People like you disgust me. <laughs> You're fucked up, dude. Hey, don't curse at me. We'll, we'll shut your water it, off right now. I, I, okay, okay. Let's take care of business here then. If, if this is a real call, I want either a badge number or some way to identify a that you have number. called me. Huh? I don't have to tell you shit, motherfucker. All I know is you need to stop doing this because we're in the middle of a drought. Wait a minute. You, 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 you can't swear. You can, I can't swear at you. You can swear at me for no good reason. Uh, no good reason. I have a good reason. It's because you're being a motherfucker and using up everyone's water. You need to follow the rules and stop using so much water. God, you, if God you listen, you asshole, hey, you motherfucker hey. yourself. Go check my fucking record if you before you call me. I Goodbye. don't have to check shit. And I'm turning off. Okay. <laughs> You're listening to this everybody you're listening to the snowplow show this is episode 715 i'm your host brad today is august 20th 2021 and this show is brought to you by five random people that support me over on the patreon their names are your boy john cena synthhead plaz christine and arbitrary alex thank you those people for supporting the show today And of course, everyone else that supports the show on the Patreon or the other things, or sends me phone numbers or makes me songs, all that amazing stuff that you guys do. Thanks! I have a few things to talk about. Number one, on Tuesday, I did a Beverly Bot show. It was a live show. You're probably wondering what the fuck a Beverly Bot show is. It turns out a Beverly Bot show is a show where I stream for four or five hours and I just play a bunch of calls from the Beverly Bot machine. Isn't that right, Beverly? What kind? 
kind of a Christian plays your fucking game? Give me a break. May God strike you dead, you piece of shit. Wow, that seemed uncalled for. Anyway, you can go listen to that right now. I put it on phonelosers.com. It's a very unedited and unorganized show. I usually spend hours editing these snowplow shows, but on that Beverly Bot show, I spent approximately five minutes editing. I just went through and chopped out some silences and that was it. That's probably why it's five hours long, but there's some good stuff in there. I mean, there's some okay stuff in there. And the most important thing is that I did a bunch of voicemails live on the air on the end of the Beverly Bot show. I think I did like 40 minutes worth of voicemails and I'm all caught up now with the voicemails. I haven't gone and looked at them today, but last I checked, I had maybe five days worth of voicemails in there. That was a couple days ago. So that's exciting. I finally listened to all the voicemails. Woohoo. And if you want to hear those, just go listen to the Beverly Bot Show over at phonelosers.com. I'll have a link to it in the show notes on snowplowshow.com. In other exciting news, somebody out there, somebody on YouTube, found the the prank call that people have been asking me about for years, and I've kind of wondered what happened to it. There was this call I did back in 2013. We weren't even sure what year this happened until just a couple days ago, or maybe it was yesterday. But I found the Charlie Bucket prank call where I called up the actor who played Charlie in the Willy Wonka movie from the 1970s, and I hacked his answering machine by hitting random touch tones. I'm going to play just a small bit of that. Or here, let me find... Ah, shoot. Hold on. All right. Calling Peter Ostrom. All right, here it is. This is the original call to him. I mean, the first one. I called him several times that night trying to get him to pick up. From Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory from the 1970s. Hello, you've reached the Wachowski Ostrom family. So that's apparently uh, Charlie Bucket's wife. His real name is Peter. New messages. What are my other options, answering machine? There's me stumbling a- across the code. Record at the tone. Oh, no. Hi, this is Charlie. Uh, I'm not here right now. Leave your message at the tone and I'll get back to you as soon as I return from Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. Yeah, that's a good one. 2013 Brad. Way to go. And that was his outgoing message. That's not just me leaving a message on his machine. That's me changing the greeting that people hear when they call in. But later in the show, this is a live show that I did. And and this wasn't a snowplow show. This is one of those, um, it was called the Generic Tortilla Chips and Four Locos show. And I did this one on April 6th, 2013. I forget how long the show was. Oh, and I forgot to mention, whoever figured this out, he posted a comment about it on YouTube and is like, I finally found it. And I deleted his comment from my email. It went to my email first. I deleted the comment because I went to the YouTube page and I was going to reply to him. But then his comment was not there. It's like he deleted it or maybe YouTube deleted it for some reason. And by that point, the comment that I got in my email, it was gone. I didn't want to go searching for that. So I don't know who found this. Whoever you are, if it was you, speak up in the voice voicemails or in the comments or something. I'm sorry. I'm not giving you credit for finding this. I can't even search for the comment in my email because he didn't say anything specific. He just said something like, oh my god, here it is. And I knew exactly what he was talking about for some reason. And I was right. He also didn't put a timestamp in there. So I had to search through the entire show just hoping that that's what he meant. But it was, thankfully. And yes, I know that message that I left on his machine was horrible. This next clip from the same night happened right after I went on a, a break for music. And I turned down my sound and I wrote a quick song to sing into his answering machine. And I didn't listen to this entire thing. So I don't know if this is me just leaving a normal message for him. I think that's what this is. I don't think this is his outgoing message. I think I was having troubles getting into his machine again to change his outgoing message one more time to turn it into something that was less lame than what I left. Anyway, here's the message I left for Charlie Bucket, a.k.a. Peter. Oompa, oompa, oompa do you do? I can't even do it without laughing. Real professional. I've got an answering machine message for you. If you're wise, you'll listen to me. Get out of bed and check your machine. What do you get when you sleep through my calls? Slug worth calling and busting your balls. Give me a goddamn everlasting gobstopper. If you don't, I'll take away all your chocolate That last part didn't rhyme. I'm sorry, but I tried my best, Charlie. I tried my best. Okay. Man, you guys should really appreciate the sound quality on shows these days, because that sound was just terrible. I had some kind of effect happening on my voice. Why? I don't know. I don't know how anyone could stand me back then. 
But there you go. There's the Charlie Bucket answering machine hack. You know what? I'm going to name this show Charlie Bucket just because I can't think of a better name for today's show yet. Maybe I'll change it by the time I'm done with editing. Once again, thank you, whoever found that. I wish your comment didn't disappear on YouTube. Maybe you listened all the way through and you're like, wow, that was fucking stupid. And then you just deleted your comment because you didn't want to contribute to that. I don't blame you. It was pretty underwhelming for me, too. Uh, one last thing, in addition to the Beverly Bot show that I did this week, I also did a hobo sode. I think that was on Monday. You can find that on Patreon or on phonelosers.com. Hobo sode number 303, where I called up people and asked them if they're vaccinated. People didn't seem to like that when the HOA wanted to know if they were vaccinated. So listen to all of the shows, please. That'd be great. That'd make me happy. Hi, Mr. Biggs, and you've tuned in to the Snowplow Show on the Phone Losers of America Radio Network. Playing the best pranks of the 80s, 90s, and today. Hello. Hey, Chin. Yes, this is Chin. Hello? Hello? It's so loud over there. Oh, sorry. Uh, I was at the party. Oh, okay. Well, it's 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 uh it's Chester from the uh from the golf course behind your house. Okay. Uh, can you please stop stealing our golf balls that end up over there? Uh, just throw them back toward the golf course. We'll get them. We didn't st- throw steal any ball, golf ball. What are you talking about? Well, when, whenever uh whenever whenever one of our stray golf balls lands in your yard, you always keep it. So- I never keep it. Oh, can you can you just please not do that Are anymore? You, I, hey, hey, I never do it. So don't don't you don't throw that shit at me. I sir, didn't do anything. Sir, I didn't keep the ball. If if you find a golf ball, that's still our property. Just because it's just because it's in your yard, that doesn't mean I did can, not. I did not first. Hey, let, hey, let me explain. I did not keep any of your golf balls. I don't need the golf ball. I don't play golf. Maybe it's your okay? damn kids. It, it may, can you ask? I your, don't. Hey, 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 hey! Shut up. What? Nothing to do with my kid. Okay, stop fucking complaining. Okay, no, I'm okay? not complaining. It, you, it's you, just you may, okay. Maybe you have the wrong person. Okay, don't blame me. Don't blame my your kid. We, Did you see me take the ball? We did you fucking see me? Well, take we the ball? we figure it's probably just your damn kids. If it's not you. Oh yeah, maybe it's your damn kid come to my property and take my ball. Oh, I don't okay? have kids, sir. Fuck. Sir, I I just. <laughs> Whoa! Did you guys hear that? I think I may have cut him off. Here, let me replay that. Let's do a quick instant replay of his end. Come to my property and take my ball. Okay? Shut the fuck up. I like that guy. Wish I could call him back, but nah, I don't know what else to say to him. That's a number from Nick. I'm calling up requests today from my request folder. That guy was selling a car, and his house just happens to be behind a golf course. And Nick said I should accuse him of standing around naked in his backyard or taking golf balls. I chose option number two. But you know what? I was going to try and get around to the naked thing if he hadn't hung up on me. Here's another one from Nick. He wants me to complain about this guy's white plastic chairs on his front porch because they make the neighborhood look poor. And he sent me a Google link. I can see the white plastic chairs on his porch. They're those standard ones that you get from everywhere. The absolute cheapest ones you can buy. Hello. Hey, is this Lavidmer? Yes, it is. It's Jerry from the Homeowners Association. From where? The Homeowners Association. Oh, okay. Yeah, they want me to call you up and ask if you could get some better chairs on your porch than those white plastic ones. Uh-huh. You know you, know you have those white plastic chairs on your porch? Yeah. Yeah, th- those are like the shitty ones that you get from Walmart for $7. Do you think you could get something a little more high-end? Who, who is getting... Who, who is... Telling me a shitty one. Oh, uh, I I don't know where you bought them. It, it's just that uh, you know, it, it brings down the property values of the whole neighborhood when you have that ugly stuff out on your porch. Do you think you could uh, get something nicer? I I really I don't respect what you're saying. What I'm getting for my my front front porch. Yeah, it's just it's those white plastic chairs. And tables. Okay. Yeah, they're ugly. Who told you he's ugly? Uh, well, it's just uh, common knowledge that that, that um, particular style is very ugly. And they get all dirty fast, you know? They get all 
Are you just... are by my house right now? Oh no, no, I'm I'm here in my office, uh, here with the HOA, here in my home office. You are in your office, and you're telling me I have shitty stuff in my porch. Yeah, those the 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 white plastic chairs and tables. They're very shitty looking. Did you see it? Yeah. Oh yeah. I've I looked on uh, Google Street View. I looked myself. I'm. Oh my goodness. The, those. Those are bringing down property values all over the neighborhood. Can you please just replace those with? Uh, I, I really, I really don't appreciate what you're freaking telling me right now. Well, maybe you can get some of those iron chairs with some cushions. Are you gonna pay for it? No, no, you have to pay for your own chairs. I'm not. No, your I'm not gonna pay for it. I'm not your damn mom. What the fuck are you talking about? I, I, why would I pay for your chair, your chairs, on your porch? That doesn't make any sense at all, sir. You, your phone call doesn't make any sense at all. What you're talking about? Oh yes, it Did does. You know that? No, it does. It like the the white chair that's on your porch. It is so. I don't give a fuck who complain about it. Ugly. They can come to me and complain about it. You need to get some iron. You, I iron. appreciate it for what you calling me for it. And don't call me for that anymore. Maybe maybe Did you got that. Maybe some aluminum chairs with the vinyl stretched across it. Did you get what I tell you? No, I was too busy thinking about aluminum don't, instead of don't iron. Don't freaking call me for that bullshit anymore. Did you hear me what I said? Well, I heard you that time. It's just, uh, you don't really get a choice. You have to get rid of the the, the ugly white chair and chairs and tables. You just have to. Can you come? Can you come somewhere and just show me how I can throw it out, and you can uh, tell me what what you want to buy? No, no, just just take those over to the Goodwill, give don't them away. Don't call me anymore, and take your phone shit away, and don't call me for this shit anymore, and tell the guy who called you or whatever this is your idea. Don't fucking bother me again. Sir, Did you hear that? No. Okay. C- could you bye. repeat? Could you repeat that, please? <laughs> I was trying to be like Linnybot to him. Let him say a bunch of stuff to me and be like, uh, oh, didn't quite hear you there. You're going to have to say all that again. And man, am I proud of Marissa. She graduated from the university with distinctions. Here's a lady selling a chair. It's a recliner chair. It's got a charger port on the side of it. Hello. Hey, Danette. Yes? I'm calling about your chair. Oh, hi. I'm so sorry. How are you? Yeah, I'm pretty good. How are you? Good, good. How are you? Oh, I'm pretty good. How are you? Good. You're interested in the chair? Yes. All right. Um, um it's it's still up for sale. Oh, you just got it in uh, uh like not even a year ago. Yeah, I bought it in December and you know, it was one of those things where I picked it out and get it home and he does my husband just really doesn't care for it. Oh. So he Yeah, I mean what, it's super a, nice. I a, love it. What a what a cry baby. I know. Oh. So I'm like, All right, let's see if I can get rid of this and we're gonna try again, but this time I'll take him with me. That's a great idea. So, but like you're, yeah. you're losing two hundred dollars on this, and it's not even been a year. This is a bad I investment. I know, but what? I was like, you know what? It is what it is. So why, why couldn't um, you just take it back? Um, I didn't really try. I mean, I figure, ma'am, um, you know, ma'am, you're got- you're not you're not good with your money. He should, okay, that's he, fine. He, so, are you, he, it's okay. He should are you not let in- you have the checkbook. That's fine. Are you interested in the chair? I don't know if I can buy a chair from someone who sucks at money this badly. I mean, you're losing $200, and it hasn't even been... Well, darn it. She hung up on me. I shouldn't have let her think that I'm not interested, because then she just hung up on me. Here's a request from Teen Wolf Jesus. He wants me to call up this guy that is an office manager for a law firm that a friend of mine works at. It's an ambulance-chasing law firm. Oh, that's great. What could go wrong there? Prank calling a law firm. He wants me to do a phone number change. He tells me who the carrier is. That's nice. Thanks for that. Hello. Hey there. It's uh, Steve Dave from AT and T. Uh, yes. Ca- Calling to let you know this five two number. It's expired, and we're going to be changing that today. What um, do you mean five two expired? I don't understand. Oh, it's it's expired. It's an expired number. So we're going to change that to a brand. What do you mean, uh, sir? You, why? You, why? Nobody told me it's expired. Okay, well, I'm telling you now. That's why I'm calling you. So we're going to change this to a new number. You still get the two area code, which is nice. It's just going to be a different phone okay. number. Okay. So what I'm going to do with all the people that have my number? 
Uh, give them your new number because when they call this five two number, it's just going to go to a disconnected recording. Holy shit! Whoa! Hey, why is that? Don't don't curse at me, sir. I'm just the, the employee doing my job here. But why? Why? Nobody told me when I got that uh, that number that it's going to expire. Oh, it was probably in the fine print of uh, your your telephone contract here. You bought the cheap number that expires instead of buying the premium number that doesn't expire. What do you mean cheap? And uh, that's the first time I hear in my life cheap number and a and premium number. I don't understand. Well, that, that's how it's always been. Numbers will expire if you don't buy the expensive premium plan. You have to buy the non-expiring number. So ne next time you should get the uh, the premium one. But I'm not here to sell you premium service, sir. I'm just here to give you your new phone number. No, I want to keep that number. Oh, no, no. You bought the cheap expiring number. That was a really dumb business decision. So, uh, Who are you, sir? Uh, my name is Steve Dave. I'm with the uh, AT&T Call Center. Just uh, calling up to give you your new phone number. I'm getting ready to push the sequence of commands right now to change your number. You're playing me. Playing you? Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, sir, I'm, I'm with AT&T. I'm in the call center. AT&T is 1-800 number. It's not 586. Right. If you call in, it's a 1-800 number. If we call out, it's a different phone number because people never pick up Sir, I've, been numbers. A, I've had phone numbers for 50 years. That's the first time somebody tells me you buy a cheap number or expensive number. Well, sir, it's like it's right there in the, in the, in the sales pitch. You have to buy the premium number. You probably said no and didn't even listen. We're going to change your number. Would you like the new number? I've got it right here. I don't have a pen right now. Hold on. Oh, my God. What kind of person are you? Who are you, sir? Uh, this is Steve Dave. I'm with the AT&T call center. I don't believe you. Why don't you believe me? I don't believe you. Oh, okay. Well, you, you'll believe me when you someone tries to call your number and it doesn't work. Steve, what is your name? Uh, my name is Steve. That Steve was, what? That was a weird question. Steve, what is your name? What is your last name, sir? Uh, Dave. Why do you need this? Like, you don't need this. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to investigate Wait you. Wait a minute. So you have a pen to write down my name, but not to write down your new phone yes. number that you actually need? Because I find it unusual AT&T calling me two minutes before they disconnect my phone for a cheap service. Sir, I find it very strange. This has been on your phone bill for the past year. You better upgrade your phone number. Go look at your phone bill right now. You'll see it. You, you, need, you are a bad businessman. Yes. If you don't know these things. Okay. So go ahead. I'm listening. What? Oh, the new phone? Give me the fucking number. Whoa, yeah. hey, 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 don't curse at me. I won't give you shit, motherfucker. Yeah. Go ahead. All right, it's uh, area code 2. Yes. Yes. 6-3. It says I'm listening to all you. Sorry, what? No, no, I'm not talking to you. Well, who are you talking to? You don't have to. It's not out of your business. Well, you, why don't you tell them to shut up? You're on the phone. What is your fucking problem, man? Well, you keep cursing at me. That's my problem. Okay. Okay. Please stop cursing. Two hundred twelve. Like it. Three hundred eighteen. Three hundred eighteen. What? Speak 63. up. You're mumbling. Hello. What? What? Well, I guess I failed you, Teen Wolf Jesus. He didn't believe me. I just started fucking around because it was obvious he didn't believe me. I'm very sorry for ruining your prank request, Teen Wolf Jesus. Oh, crap. Uh, that guy is calling me back. The lawyer guy. AT&T, can I help you? This is AT&T? Yes, it is. How can I help you? Are you Steve Dave? No, no. My, ma my name is Bill Burham. Somebody called me from that number. Oh, from this number? Yeah, it's uh, usually when uh, a call is made from AT&T, it just comes out as a random phone number. But I don't understand. Somebody called me and they said they're changing my number. It expired. Never heard this in my life. Oh, you have one of those expiry numbers? I don't. I never. I, I never heard of that. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, that that's a thing. Uh, did you not buy the premium number? No, when I, when I took it, nobody told me it's premium or not premium, so I don't understand. Never heard of this in my life. Oh, I see. Uh, I can get you over to Carol. She can. That's the supervisor here today if you're having problems. No, they said they're going to change my number. Oh, yeah, if you have an expiring number. Uh, which, but what do you mean expiring number? Never heard of it in my life. Oh, which phone number? That a number expires. Is your phone number this one here on caller ID, this 6976? No. Oh, no. Uh, let's see. Wh what's your phone number? 472. Oh, that's one. that one's here. You guys are playing me, okay? Oh, no, this is I'm, not professional AT&T service. Sir, I'm, I'm trying to help you. You, you said you're, you're changing okay. your number? No, there's somebody called me. They said my number expired. Yeah, you probably didn't buy the pre... Yeah, it looks like right here that number is no longer active on your account. We're changing it today. You've got a brand but new... I never heard this in my life that the number expired. Okay, well, you don't need to be a little bitch about it, sir. We're, we're just trying to help you. You know, just, just because you haven't heard of something doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. You know, I basically ruined that again, Teen Wolf Jesus. He was kind of back to believe in me, and then I ruined it again. And how did he not recognize my voice? It has been like less than 10 minutes that I made that call to him. Maybe right around 10 minutes. But come on, he had to remember what I sound like. Here's one from, I guess, Anonymous. This is a Spectrum Call Center manager on duty line, and it's a direct phone number with the regular area code, and I guess it goes directly to the call center manager on duty at Spectrum. At this particular call center, I mean. The number is answered between these hours, and you can also call this other number to talk to the call center floor supervisor. So, okay, I'm gonna try the first number first. Hi, you've reached Vicky. Please leave me a message. I'll give you a call back. Well, that line's not picking up, but there's one here that says I can talk to the call center floor supervisor by calling this other number. That was supposed to be the manager on duty. Spectrum, this is Kit. Hey, Kit. This is uh, Steve Dave from the corporate office with Spectrum. Yeah. Uh, we've been getting reports that people in your call center are being kind of a motherfucker there today. Are being what? Well, they're, they're being sort of like, you know, motherfuckers. And we kind of have a policy against that here with corporate. Could you just kind of make an announcement that they can't be doing that? Okay. Are, are we talking using cursing words, or what are we talking? Oh, no, just in general, being uh, motherfuckers. Y you know, just the common definition. It's just uh, we, we don't allow motherfuckery here in, our, here in our call centers. Okay, and who is this? Uh, this is Steve Dave from the corporate office. Steve Dave? Yes, the Spectrum. So, uh, yeah, if you could just ask everyone there to stop being such motherfuckers. Could, could you maybe announce that real quick? How come I can't find you in a... In a... Sir. Employee search. Sir, th this is exactly what I mean. Yeah, okay, like, thank like, you. There, there's a lot of Steves in the employee search. You should be able to find me. Hello? <laughs> he didn't even ask how to spell Steve Dave. Of course he's not going to find me. It's all one word. Let me try that first number again. Hi, you've reached Vicky. Please leave ah. me a message. I'll give you a call back. Vicky is just not picking up. So I'm going to save these two numbers. These seem kind of fun, and I'll get a different person every time. It appears to be a direct line to certain people who actually believe me when I tell them not to be motherfuckers until they can't find me in the employee directory anyway. So thank you, whoever sent that in. That one came from Anonymous. Here's a list of numbers from Robert. He says, I just came into possession of some cell numbers that were saved in the Bluetooth settings of a rental car. That's kind of amazing. It even had some of their names. I figured you could have some fun with these. The car is a white Toyota Corolla. The rental agency is thrifty. I picked up the vehicle in Atlanta, but I have no idea where it would have been before then. But if they're in the address book, isn't that going to be the numbers of people they were calling? Not people that rented the car? Or maybe these are the phone numbers of phones that were connected to the Bluetooth. That's probably what it is. So, okay, I'm going to try some of these people. All right, I've been trying these for a minute. I have a call coming in. This is from one of the people that I just tried to call a few minutes ago. Nobody else is picking up. This is uh, Thr James from Thrifty. Can I help you? Hi, my name's Alicia. I just got two missed calls from this number. Oh, yeah, we were just trying to call you about that uh, white t Toyota Corolla that you rented. 
the, um, I'm, I'm with Thrifty, the, the car rental company. I know what Thrifty is, but I have not rented a white Toyota. Okay, ma'am, you can you can stop with the bitchy attitude. I, I was just trying to talk to you about some of this uh, car rental stuff, where you rented this car from us. Hey, hey, hello. What the hell is wrong with you? Don't talk to my wife that way, asshole. Hey, hey. <laughs> see, that's what I'm saying. The people in the address book—they're not the people that rented the car, are they? They're just going to be people that got saved in there somehow, right? Maybe the husband rented it though. Here, let me call back. Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice. And he's not picking up. All right, next is Charles. I've tried four people on the list. I mean, three people. Nobody's picking up. I think I've tried this guy, Charles, already. and He didn't pick up. Your call has and been forwarded to an automated voice messaging. Still not picking up. That's the only person I can get to pick up on this list. I mean, she didn't pick up. She had to call me back. And then I called her back, and she didn't pick up again. Here, let me try Alicia one more time. Your call has... Nope. They probably blocked me or something, so I just can't get through. So I will save this list, Robert, and I will try these again, because this could be fun if it actually works out. I probably just need to call it a different time of the day, or maybe in the middle of the night, since I work the night shift here at Thrifty. All right, here is one that is from an anonymous person. This guy wants people's scrap metal and old appliances. So he's one of those people that goes to the recycling place all the time and turns in a bunch of metal, and in return they give him $5. So I'm going to pretend to be from there. Hello? Hey, Mike. It's Grega from the Recycling Center. You're, you're, bringing, in, you're bringing in that metal to us? Uh, no. Yeah, huh? What are you saying? Look, you, you just can't be filling up uh, the metal with cement and rocks and stuff to make it heavier. That, that's not how things work here. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, Who is us? You know exactly what we're talking about. I'm from the Recycling Center. You're always bringing metal into us. And you need to stop weighting down the metal with, with rocks and dirt and stuff. From where? Because that costs us money. Listen, what are you talking about? Oh, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You need to stop scamming us, sir. Who is us? This is Grega from the Recycling Center. I, I don't know what the Recycling Center is. You, you bring your metal in. Are you trying to get a hold of? Who are you trying to get a hold hey, of? Hey, you tell that guy in the background just to shut up. Well, I hope this is a joke because I'm fucking pissed. Oh, why would you be pissed, sir? You're <laughs> you're the one coming in here and scamming us, putting dirt inside all this metal. You got to be smoking crack. Throwing throwing rocks. This in. has got to be a joke, sir. I do not joke. I'm a Christian. This has got to be a joke. Where's the recycling center located? You tell your tell boy hey, listen, you tell your boyfriend just shut up, okay? That's gotta be a fucking joke, these cocksuckers. I don't know. Oh oh, I'm the cocksucker and you are the one with the boyfriend in the background. Alright, so, so hey, why don't you show your face, Pong? Oh yeah, that was real tough sound. are you standing up for your woman there? You my woman, you didn't know that? I wish I was your girlfriend. You're a cutie. All right, bitch. So I'm a, I'm gonna keep scamming you, okay? Sir, if you scam us again, I'm gonna kiss you on the mouth. <laughs> Goodbye. I got shit to do, man. I'm working, but that's funny. All right. Yeah. Bye. Working. Whatever. <laughs> Guess I was wrong about that one. Maybe he's an artist. Oh, look, he's calling back. Uh, what did I say? I'm with a uh, recycling center. This is Grega. What's up, girlfriend? Hey, honey, baby. Want to fuck? So, who is this, you cocksucker? Oh, uh, you'll never know. All right, bye. It's no fun when they know it's a prank. And you know he's going to call me right back. He's probably going to start harassing me. Thanks a lot for this one, whoever sent it in. Probably Nick, because it's in your area. You didn't put your name on this one. And you know what? I'm finished, okay? It is voicemail time. Let's listen to some of these billions of voicemails. Oh, yeah. I don't have a billion voicemails anymore. I only have about a week's worth of voicemails. This is awesome. Hey, Brad. It's Max Power. Hey, I know it's been Max. a long time since you heard from me. I yeah. I just want to say. You used to send me lists that were awesome. Those were the days. Good old Max. Keep up the great work. His we list. all appreciate what you do. Thanks. And I will try to get some stuff of you here shortly. Okay. Just want to... Say we all appreciate you. Thanks. Have a good one. Thanks, see Max ya. Power. Glad to see you're still around. Oh, hey there, Brad. Hey, it's Corbin Guy. Hey, Corbin What's Guy. Up? Say, look, I was in a chat room with Ownage Pranks, 
and uh, that, that other guy. What's that other guy? Jiznos? Oh, yeah. They, they were talking mad shit about the PLA and the phone losers. Whoa. And they were just bagging on you and oh they were making God. fun of you. So what you going to do about it? I, huh? I can't handle this. I think I'm going to have to quit prank calls. I can't have people making fun of me. That is not fair for Onage Pranks to do that. <laughs> prank wars. Prank wars. <laughs> come oh, on. Shit. Come on. No. Fight. Fight. No, fight. Corbin guy. You stop that. They can say anything they want about me. I don't care. I still like Onage Pranks calls sometimes, even if he hates me. You know, I liked KDK too, and he hated me for no reason. And what chat room are you talking about? Was he doing a live show or something? Where does Onage Pranks have a chat room? I'm kind of thinking you made all this up, Corbin, just trying to start trouble in the community. Hey, RB. Stop Dave it. Dave from Texas. Hey, Dave. Hey, love the Beverly stuff. Uh, every time I hear her, she reminds me of that lady from Beetlejuice. Remember when the couple died? And oh, the lady that smokes out of her neck? Going in to get, and she gave him a book on death or something. The old lady yeah. that smoked out of her throat. She was awesome. Doesn't that remind you of Beverly, kind of? Yeah, a little bit. Anyway. The smoking part, at least. She probably smokes out of her neck, too. Later. Yeah, I love Beverly. Beverly's the best. I have phones around my house where I can just dial an extension on any phone and listen to Beverly happening live. So I do that a lot. I just put her on speaker and listen while I'm doing whatever else. Like here, I'm going to dial it right now. S-P-Y. We'll see what's happening with Beverly. J-S-I. Probably just a listener talking to her. Oh, it's silent. But that probably means somebody is on the other line right now. And they're getting ready to click over. Let's wait. It always happens eventually. Oh, and that's another thing. I set up this new system where you can, like when you call Beverly uh, during the ring or during the silence at the very beginning, you hit number five. And it gives you extra time to get somebody on the phone to prank them with Beverly. So you get like two extra, I don't know, it's like 30 extra seconds F to ring up. P Whoa, y hey. dash P J All right. S I guess I they hung up P and now we got someone else. Hello? Hello? Yes. Hi, my people Karen. Karen. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? So, for me, this is a live call happening right now. A recording. Ah, and she knows. Who the fuck is this? Mother. What is your problem? Do you have nothing better to do? No. See, that's the bad part about Beverly, is half of the calls to her are just people calling in and fucking around. And they know what's going on. I heard a really good one this morning where the guy got super pissed. And that's why I need to do more Beverly Bot shows. I need to get all those up somewhere. Hey, Brad, this is I don't regret not jumping, not I regret jumping from hey. Maryland. Okay. Hey, the personality database where they personality type celebrities, it doesn't have you on it. Um, I thought I'd let you know. Oh, darn. Uh, so I'll see if I can start, like, uh, get you on it and see if people can up and down vote your personality type. Thanks. Okay. Bye. That sounds like a great time sitting there voting on people's personality types. I already know I'm a weirdo. I don't need this. Hey, phone loser. I'm uh, I'm who I am. I'm calling it from where I'm calling from. Okay. Um, I just wanted to know if some fan of the show could ever make like a YouTube playlist. I'm pretty sure it doesn't exist yet. I think I think they exist on like another site, like maybe on the uh, PLA uh, website, but I think it's incomplete. But like. A YouTube phone list, so I could use that as a background music of just the music that people have created for PLA. That's like free domain. You can just well, I sort of did that just recently. If you go to snowplowshow.com/music, I think there's a link to it. But there's not a lot of people that put their music on YouTube, and I'm too lazy to do it myself. So if you've made a song for the show, you should put that on your own YouTube account and then send me a link for it, and I will add it to my playlist. And the playlist, uh, let me see where it is. I think it's on youtube.com slash the snowplow show. Yeah, there it is. It's called Music from the Snowplow Show. You got a fucking duck missing, buddy. And there's a song by Joe DeVita. It looks like there is uh, eight songs on there. There's the Reefer Badness songs. There's the Joe DeVita songs. There's a Vista Blue song. That playlist definitely needs more stuff in it. But instead of using YouTube, you should use uh, Henrik's playlist. He's got all of his own music in there, but he's also got everyone else's songs in there. And it's like a web-based MP3 player. I'm going to click on it right now. Yeah, look, 
There's there's Rob T. Firefly's Bell Odyssey. That has a really long intro. Bell control to lineman bomb. And there's a Carter Pillar song. Hi, I'd like to get a cake, please. There's there's Burr Stickham's song. Yeah, there's there's a ton of stuff in this thing. So go to snowplowshow.com slash music. And he's actively working on this. He has a change log on it. It looks like the last thing he did was on August 3rd. He's making this thing all fancy. And Henrik, you should tell me how to embed this thing on my own website. Is there an easy way to do that? Looks like it's made from JavaScript. Tell me how to embed it, Henrik. I would love if a playlist could just be made of that and you could pin that into the uh, phone, uh, at least the Snowplow Show or the Phone Losers yep. of America. It's on there. YouTube site. That would be awesome. It, it's just, I would love that. It's really small right now, and I'm not going to upload all the music. That sounds like a horrible time. Maybe I should just do a live show where I play all the music, and then you can just go to that video. That's that's all I had to say, Phone Loser. Um, have a great day. Okay, you too. Bye. Hey, Brad. It's Teen Wolf Jesus. Hey, Teen Wolf Jesus. Uh, so Sorry for fucking your prank up twice today. I didn't mean to. Last night, I was listening to some old uh, PLA stuff. I was actually listening to PLA Radio, Episode 7. And this mm-hmm. isn't so much for you, but everybody should listen to that episode. You did a soundboard prank for some dude named Pat Melton. Oh, and you guy. took that guy's voice, and you started pranking his boss. And you made him sound like a fucking lunatic. And yeah. He was pissed. He got on his forums and was like talking a bunch of shit about me back then. Told me how much my podcast sucked. The action after that guy was hilarious. That'd be a really cool intro to play maybe for one of the shows. Oh, but if not, everybody yeah. who's listening to this voicemail. I don't know, it's only funny if you know who the guy is really and why I'm doing it. I was doing it because he's such a dick to other people. He was doing kind of shitty prank calls. I'm like, oh, I'm going to do a shitty prank call to this guy. And then I spent days and days putting together a soundboard of his voice, which I think I still have somewhere. You should immediately listen to PLA Radio, Episode 7, somewhere on the 20-minute mark. All right, bye. Yeah, find PLA Radio, Episode 7. I don't even know where to find it. Maybe it's on YouTube. It's definitely in the PLA Media Pack. If you've ever downloaded all of my shows, you'll find it in there. PLA Radio, Episode 7. Hey, Brad, this is Chris from Sioux City, Iowa. Just hey. want to call say thanks for your work and doing your pranks. I listen to You're them welcome. while living alone, um, while eating and stuff, and just here and there. Mm. I just got okay. to listen to your episode. Are you eating uh, frozen dinners? You got to eat the frozen dinners for the full experience uh, six, of listening to my show. 6-3, where a guy is singing, I had an idea of you making more pranks like that, or getting Carol to ask guys or or girls to sing and make an intro uh, compilation out of it. That'd be kind of funny. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, Sounds like a lot of work. Well, have a good day. Bye. You have a good day, sir. Good morning, Roy. This is Ernie. Hey. Question. How come you don't do more appearances on the dick show? Every time you do one, it's hilarious. Thanks. I think you should do more. Okay. Bye-bye, friend. I think Dick from the Dick Show expects me to actually have something to bring to the show with me. And I don't know what to bring to a show. More prank calls, I guess. Hi, Brad. It's Retina. It's been like five months or something like that since we've gotten a Brad Cactus Shack. When can we expect another? Bye. Uh, whenever I think of something to do another episode about. I was thinking of making the Beverly Bot show a Brad's Cactus episode, but I kind of think I'm going to do some more Beverly Bot shows because there's so much Beverly Bot material to go through. I don't know when I'm going to do another Brad's Cactus Shack. I have to look through my hard drive and see what kind of stuff I have to put in there. I gotta at least have some good stuff to put in the show. Hey, bro. Hey. This is BT Beats. I was thinking it'd be cool if you set up Beverly Bot to talk to Edward Bot. Have you ever done that? Mm. You should. I have not done that, but a billion other people have, and it's exactly what you would expect. First, Beverly says something, and then the Go Cup guy says something, and then. Beverly says something again, and then the Go Cup guy says something. It's a little repetitive, because I already know both of their lines. I mean, it works. If you're wondering that, it definitely works. People are doing it all the time. They're tying up my phone lines, connecting them together. Do it, and then never, just never stop it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, actually, that's the reason I had to put a limit on the length of calls, because people would just put those two on the line together and just let it go. Just tying up the lines, eating up my processing power. Hey, Brad, call me Cactus calling in. Hey. I was just uh, calling in to complain that you really had the nerve to play the Go Cups prank on the last episode. 
but you didn't end the show with the Go Cup song. I can't believe how many people have complained about this to me. That's like one of the best songs written for the I show. I know. It's so a great song. I would song. like to humbly request that you play it at the end of today's episode. Thank you very much. Maybe. Maybe I will. Maybe I have something else planned. But fuck it. I'll play Reefer Badness's Go Cup song just for you. Just in case there's a new listener out there that hasn't heard it yet. Because it's a pretty amazing song. I kind of want to stop doing voicemails right now, but I'm all caught up, you know? I can't just not do these last few. Hey, Brad. It's Crimson. Hey. Remember uh, Hunga Dunga from the People's Karma Squad way back? He gave his uh, 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 PLA t-shirt to a real-life hobo. A <laughs> real-life hobo, Brad. Can you believe it? I can't believe I know, that. I it was crazy. It is. And then he was wearing that Burger King hat. Remember that? And you made the picture for the show? Oh, man. Brad. I don't remember the Burger King hat. I'm so sorry. <laughs> we just have to do it. We, we have to move in on, on like, the hobo capital of the world. But the only problem is I don't know which one it is. Is it Portland? Is it San Francisco? Is definitely it, on the West Coast. I'm sure LA? of that. Is it Seattle where, you know, he took that picture? I don't know, Brad. What do you think? What's the best place in America to be a hobo? You would know, of course, since, you know, you were a hobo once. I was a hobo in the 90s. Being a hobo was so different back then. I was nothing like the lazy hobos that you see today. And also, I don't know what you're asking me to do. You want me to start like a hobo village? We've got a billion of those around here. Hello, Brad. Um, it's Ryan. I'm just, I'm just calling to say hi. Hey, Ryan. Um, hope you're having a good day. Ryan from Connecticut. Um, and a good night. And hopefully uh, that you could have another post uh, post, uh, post no plus show out in the next a few days well it didn't happen did it you sent this message on august 12th oh it looks like i didn't play your message on the previous show like i should have because i was all behind on voicemails anyway hope you didn't have to wait too long for your snowplow show my guess is it was less than a week Brad, you said if i put my message in that it could get played all so right why not man yeah why not take a risk it's a gamble. You never know if it's going to get played or not. Oh, this is Kai from Minnesota. <laughs> and it's, it's, my it's a great voice, man. Birthday, and I just want you to say happy birthday to Liz, and I'll cry on a podcast if I have to, man. I'm not doing it. Oh. All right, happy birthday, Liz. Fuck life, Brad. Oh. But now I'm ending your voicemail because what the hell? Fucking weirdo. Hey, Brad, this is Randall from Pearland, Texas. Hey, Randall. I was calling. I I guess I average about one call a year, but... You I, know, I lost a car in Pearland, Texas once. It broke down, and I just never saw it uh, again. My wife... That sucked. And I... That's back when I was homeless, too. So I couldn't even live in my car anymore. I had to live outdoors and stuff. I like to watch a lot of... Thanks to your dumb town. ...reality TV. And it seems like at least few times a year we're watching a show that has a Natalie in it and the whole season all I can do every time they're like Natalie Natalie I just sing that song by Hot Carl every time and my wife hates it yeah. so much I sing that when there's not a Natalie around that just goes through my head 24 7 never ends um but yeah <sighs> that's uh a stupid story um, anyways, you should make more Natalie calls. I like your story. See ya. No, I don't want to make more Natalie calls. I'm going to end up getting me too by all the Natalies in the United States. I don't want that. Hello, Bradley Carter. Hey. It's Caleb from Ohio. Hey, just wanted Caleb. to ask you, how are you doing? I'm doing you know, just people great. ask you how you're fucking doing and whatnot, but you never, you never actually say. Are you doing good? Are you doing horrible? It's because I hate the question. Let, let us know, you know? Come on, let, let us know already. I'm doing just fine, Caleb. Hello, Bradley. I just wanted to let you know that every time I watch your show, I get an extra long stiffy in my pants. Oh, nice. Thank you. Congratulations on your stiffy today. And look at that. That's the very last voicemail in my voicemail box. It is completely emptied right now. That's kind of nice. It's been over a year since I've seen that. And that was a perfect voicemail to end on, too. A voicemail about stiffies. 
So guess what? The show's over. There's no more voicemails to play. I gotta get going because the Dragon Mirror show started already and I'm not even listening to it. They're an hour into the show right now. I'm missing it all just to put this out. I think I'm gonna put off editing for a few hours and go listen to some Dragon Mirror. So goodbye, everybody. Thank you to the sponsors of today's show. They are your boy John Cena, Synthhead, Plaz, Christine, and Arbitrary Alex. Don't forget to listen to the entire five-hour Beverly Bot show that I put out earlier this week. If you would just use a podcast app like a normal person, you'd already know about it. Why don't you do that, damn it? I'm ending today's show with a song by Reefer Badness. I don't know what the name of it is. I think it's called No, I Don't Go to the Go Cup Places, and I Don't Go Out for Coffee, and I Don't Throw My Go Cups Out the Window Because I Don't Have Any. That's the name of the song. Bye, everybody. You can tell Andy to suck a dick. I don't care about Andy. You, you let Andy know I said that, too. Ooh, ooh. What, are you having a heart attack? What's going on? No, I don't go to the go-cup places, and I don't go out for coffee. And I don't throw the go-cups out the window, because I don't have any. You don't have any windows? I'm a diabetic, and I drink water. I don't have a cup. Bottled water is what I do. Well, you can't throw the bottles out the window. I don't throw the bottles, no. I don't go to the go-cup places, and I don't go out for coffee. And I don't throw the go cups out the window because I don't have any. You don't have any windows? Do you know who lives next to me? Andy Anderson. Oh, shit. He just retired as the deputy chief of police for the city of Phoenix. I'm going to give him this phone number and ask. I think you have ADD. No, I don't drink coffee. I don't even have a cup. I drink bottled water, so you need to back your facts up. I'm a diabetic, need to watch my sugar count. Coffee's not a beverage I drink when I'm driving a bell. I never drop litter in my whole damn life. If you see me sat in Starbucks, I'm just here to use the Wi Fi. I didn't see no secret camera hidden in the cacti. Andy Anderson is gonna fuck you up, wise guy. I don't drink coffee, it's not my drink of choice. I order spring water when I'm drinking with the boys. Caffeine is mean to me, there's nothing to enjoy. Say your name again? Void? I'm recording this call on my answering machine I assure you that it's working though you didn't hear a beep I'm gonna take this tape and fucking march it down the street Knock on Andy's door and get a hair by the chief of Phoenix, please No, I don't go to the go-cup place And I don't go out the cop And I don't throw the go-cup out the window Because I don't have any You don't have any windows? I'm a diabetic and I drink water I don't have a cup Bottled water is what I do. You can't throw the bottles out the window. I don't throw the bottle, no. I don't go to the go-cup places, and I don't go out for coffee. And I don't throw the go-cups out the window, because I don't have any. You don't have any windows? No, I don't go to the go-cup places, and I don't go out for coffee. And I don't throw the go-cups out the window, because I don't have any. You don't have any windows? I'm a diabetic, and I drink water. I don't have a cup. Bottled water is what I do. Well, you can't throw the bottles out the window. I don't throw the bottles, no. I don't go to the go-cup places, and I don't go out for coffee. And I don't throw the go-cups out the window, because I don't have any. You don't have any windows? Do you know who lives next to me? Andy Anderson. Oh, shit. He just retired as the deputy chief of police for the city of Phoenix. I'm going to give him this phone number and ask. I think you have ADD. I bet, you're, I bet you're the most annoying neighbor ever, like every little thing that happens to you. I'm going to get the deputy. He lives next door to me. We're good friends. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, I don't go to the oh, I'm a diabetic and I drink water. Fuck you. We've got our cacti is on you. That's our new slogan. This is Thrifty Brad speaking. Can I help you? I, uh, somebody called me from this number, so I, I'm just returning the call. Oh, yeah, you had the rent-a-car, right? The Toyota Corolla? You, you, rent, uh, you rented a car from us. This is thrifty. Oh, that's not me. What? No. Oh, yes, you did. We we have the records right here. When? 
Uh, looks like about two weeks ago, you rented this uh, this Toyota Corolla from us, the white one. I wanted. I just went any any Corolla two weeks ago. I wanted a car from uh, what is that in Philadelphia? What? Huh? I just I, I just rented a car in Philadelphia. Yeah, you you rented a car from us, and I just looked at the camera. That was running while you were while you were driving our rental car, and I saw you picking your nose. Excuse me. You were picking your nose. We we have. What do you mean, sir? We have cameras in those cars. <laughs> you were picking your nose. What 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 when when was that? Why exactly did I went the car? And and you were wiping the boogers under the seat, and we're gonna have to charge you for that. So I'm just letting you know. Uh, no, that's not me. <laughs> that's not me. Sorry. Oh, no, we know it was you, sir. So we're, we're just going to have to charge you for this uh, just a booger cleanup underneath the seat. That's not me. You, you're supposed to, you know, why don't you just invest in a little box of Kleenex and bring them with you? And you're going to wipe your boogers on the Kleenex. <laughs> and you shouldn't be picking. Is that a joke or what? Oh, no, it's not a joke. <laughs> I'm a when cr- did I rent the car? Where? When? You, Where? You rented the car from Thrifty. Where? Atlanta. Aha, uh-huh, I got you, didn't I? I knew see, I knew it was no, you. No, no, no. So ago, listen, true, sir. No. There there well, yeah. we have policies against doing stuff like that in the car. You you know we had a camera in there, so I don't know why you'd pick your nose if there's a camera watching you. What are you talking about? <laughs> picking your nose. Don't be picking your nose in our car. You know, do that in your own car. Mm. Anyway, I don't know what you're talking about. It's disgusting, sir. Gross. Ugh. Look at that, Robert. I can cross another one off of your list. You called me back. <laughs>